Hey guys, it's Ryan. Welcome back to my Illustrator Basics course. Uh, this lesson is 9.1 and we're going to discuss symbols. So what they are, how to use them, and what they can do to help your uh, artwork and your uh, design process go faster. Um, and then the next lesson, 9.2, we will show you how to create symbols. Alright, so Let's uh, get right into it. As you see, I've opened up a letter-sized landscape uh, blank document, and um, you can do the same if you'd like. Uh, any old size will, will do, as long as you can see the artboard. So your symbols panel is going to be over here in your toolbar if your uh, tools are, are your, um, your panels. You'll see this icon that looks like a club from a deck of cards, you know, the suit of clubs, and it says symbols when you hover over it. And I click that so you can see. It's also on a on the by default if you're in Essentials workspace, which I am. Um, let me get back there to it. Um, it's also on the same panel group as your swatches and brushes. So there's symbols. Uh, another way to find it is down the window menu down to symbols. And as you see, it also has a shortcut key Shift Command F11 or Shift Control F11 on a PC. And that will bring up your symbols panel. Now what is a symbol? It is a predefined piece of artwork, so we'll grab this one that looks like a, an ink splot and we'll just drag it to the desktop here or to the artboard and I will do that again, grab another one and the cool thing about a symbol is it is completely customizable. I mean you can edit and change the uh, you can transform the size the shape you could rotate it you could use any of the uh, transform tools you could reflect it um, and and so that'll that will affect that symbol instance is what it's called it's an instance of the symbol and basically an instance is one copy of that symbol from the library and you can do whatever you want to with that symbol however if you isolate that symbol and go ahead and transform it so double click it to enter isolation mode it, you'll get this warning you are about to edit the symbol definition any edits to the symbol will be applied to all its instances. Do you want to continue? And I'll hit yes just to show you. So it reverted back to the appearance of the def uh, of that default symbol. So I'll select it. We'll go up here. We'll get a fill color. Change to our CMYK sliders. I'll get a picker and get this kind of a teal green here. Now I've changed the color in the symbol itself and if I click out all instances of that symbol are now changed to that teal green color. So as you edit a symbol just be aware that that's the case. So let me edit back go undo and edit back or go back out of that. The other option you can do is click to select the symbol and then right click and do you can reset the transformation back to the default um, you can break link to the symbol so what that does you can see now it has changed the artwork when you had the symbol before all you had was the artwork bounding box and now you can see all of the anchor points are selectable and so I can come in there with the direct selection tool and make changes to that symbol 
itself or that instance of the symbol because I've broken the connection to the default or to the, that symbol. And that again was link, break the link to the symbol. And now I can change this one as well. This one is different than this one. And if I drag a few more, these are all going to be, you know, the same symbol that they were. So if I edit this one, go back to that teal color. It doesn't affect these other ones. If I change this one, it also doesn't affect the other ones and it doesn't affect this one. But if I edit this one, and I need to have my selection tool to do that, then it will change. Oops, I didn't grab my color first. And it will change all of the instances, even in the library here, in the symbols panel, all of the instances of that symbol. Okay, so that's how symbols work. Um, and you can always undo. Well, actually, you can always undo back to a point in that same document. If, however, you save and close that document, then the changes you make to the uh, symbol will be reflected in that in in that document. So I will make a copy, as you saw, by dragging the symbol down to the new symbol button down here and it looks like a new page. So now I have this new symbol and we'll drag it over here and we will drag a couple of copies and I will I will make one of them unique. I'll break it from the uh, break the link from the symbol. And then this other one or this one I will go in again and change the color and this one I will I will not break the link but I will go in and change that color yes and if you happen to hit that don't show again check mark you won't see that again so just be aware of that all right okay and now I will close that document. Well, I, I'm going to save it as Untitled 1 is fine. And then I'm going to close it. And then I open again. And you see now this template or this symbol is this uh, bluish purple, kind of a bluish lavender color. Don't really periwinkle maybe. Um, so it's this periwinkle color. This one that was the link was broken is just now artwork again, and so it can be this um, almost seafoam green color. And the original that I made the copy of is still black, and that's because I hadn't changed that at all. So that's how you can use symbols. Now, uh, why you may want to do that is. Um, let's say you have uh, like a well here's a good example here's this button and you want to use this button over and over and over again in your artwork and now you only have to you know have that button as a symbol once and so okay we're gonna change it we're gonna change it from this blue color and we're going to to go into the gradient and we're going to change you know let's let's say we change this to more of a greenish color and give it a nice highlight looking thing there and now all of them reflect that change that I made to that blue button to have the green band in the middle of that that button and so that that's why it's a good thing to have symbols because you can change one and it changes all over your artwork um, in the uh, next project that I'm doing with the class we're going to have game pieces so 
you can see how a symbol that you create um, and use as part of your game piece, say for checkers or poker chips or something like that, and you can modify that, that symbol one time and it's reflected in all of those other symbols, okay? All of those other instances of that symbol, just like this button here. All right, so let's uh, stop here and then we'll start the next lesson and we'll discuss how to create symbols.